Welcome, I'm Ken David Mazur, Music Director of the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra, and I'm so thrilled that I'm here together with our Director of the Chorus, the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra Chorus, Cheryl Frazes Hill. And hello, hello Cheryl. Ken. It's nice to be here with you. Good to be here too. Uh, we're so excited because uh, this is our first call program of the season and I'd love to ask the first question about your love of Brahms. My love for Brahms uh, started with me as a singer. Um, I think uh, every singer has good things to say about Brahms. He truly understands the voice and uh, I mean it, it, it's difficult sometimes to sing uh, at the level that he writes, but at the same time, if you have that technique in line, the, the music sings itself and had a great uh, understanding not only of, of line, but also how to set the text in a way that makes it uh, meaningful and resonates with you as, a, as an artist. Um, but these are unusual uh, works that don't get performed very often because you have to find the right context and also because they're quite deep. How for you are especially the Schicksalslied, the Song of Fate and Gesang der Parzen? These are two quite deep, deeply moving pieces with texts by Hölderlin and Goethe. In all the years that I have been a choral singer or a choral conductor, I have never performed the Gesang der Parzen. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited that you chose that piece. But the interesting way that these fit together, it's really um, during his period of writing the Requiem and shortly thereafter writing the Schicksalslied. And you see these very interesting parallels between the two pieces in the harmonic language, in the way that he sets the accompaniment. Some of the motives come right out of the Requiem. This was, of course, uh, shortly after Robert Schumann had passed away his, and uh, Brahms's mother had passed away, that he became much more introspective about life, about death, and I think about fate. In some ways, he was almost communicating a, a sense of, of helplessness and that we are victim to not living the ethereal life of the gods. And of course, he, he uses the, the Greek themes, the mythological themes to express this. There's so many layers to it, and it's really incredible how there's kind of this line between Requiem and to the Gazan der Parts, and I think they're a beautiful pair. For me, what's so extraordinary is, which you already alluded to, is how he understands the language and can make the orchestra sound so extraordinarily nuanced. And also that our chorus is so very well able to really get the expression out and understanding the meaning behind each syllable. And for us to basically, with the orchestra, to, to reiterate that and form that and color it. But it's so interesting because at the beginning of the Gazang der Parts, in which he brings back is this warning, beware of the gods. Yeah. And the fact that he goes through all of the things that the gods could do and then says, and beware of mm -hmm. the gods. It's, I, I think it leaves us hanging a little bit. Has he resolved this mm -hmm. or is this just the way it is and we are helpless to it? I think it's also that he doesn't give us, you know, Goethe gives us the resolution. He gives us the hope. And Brahms lets us fend for ourselves. Exactly. And, and, and that's where our, if you will, our printed encore comes into play. Thank goodness for the encore. <laughs> <laughs> because we need it. Now, beautiful. And Yes, good. Um, thank you so much for learning this. The, the whole point of this before we start is for you to enjoy it, actually. You know, the, the two other pieces we were just talking about this are such a contrast, you know, about how little we are and how we, you know, all of us will die soon and the gods are up there having fun, you know, and, but no, this, we get the last drink, the last laugh. And I always wondered if there was an arrangement out there that actually introduces all of these student songs. Um, and I couldn't find one, so I decided with the help of everyone to kind of create one. And basically you are now the ones that, that get to bring it to life. 
I'm so grateful for that. That's the first thing I want to say. I grew up with the story of how the academic overture came about um, all my life because my father was born a half an hour away from Wurzbach, Breslau, where Brahms wrote this piece for. And nobody ever understood why, what, is so, what, is, what is so Brahms about, we don't get it. It's because we're used to Gesang der Paz, and we're used to Song of Fate, we're used to the, all the, you know, the German Requiem and their, you know, heavy stuff. And, and we're thinking, you know, Brahms had a really great sense of humor. I think for the audience to understand the overture, they need to understand where the songs come from. And when this piece was first performed, uh, all the students were probably singing it for that whole weekend while drinking. And so they would have understood the reference. And so you're basically creating the reference of how bizarre and how kind of drunk this whole thing is. Bravo, I'm looking forward. This is going to be great. Thank you, everyone. Well, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to you and to the chorus and to our first program of the season together. Thanks, Thank Sharon. Thank you so much.